Morning everyone, my name is Darren Parker over from Melbourne. I'm the owner of the VF Commodore behind you here, or behind me here. Um, I've called it the Co Co Copo Commodore. So using the Copo Camaro as inspiration for building this car. Um, I love the factory stock class out of America. So the idea of this was to build a drag car in Australia as if Holden built their own drag car like Chevrolet do in America. Yeah, so using the Copo Camaro for inspiration it is actually a V6 chassis, so same as what they do in America. They take a V6 chassis off their production line and then convert it into a race car. I bought a statutory, a statutory write-off for a VF, so it was, it was originally a six-cylinder. cost me a couple of thousand dollars and the car had been written off because it was too expensive to repair. So the, the shell itself's got about 100,000 kilometres on it. So the engine's got a 412 cubic inch LS, so it's an aluminium LSR block, uh, mast cylinder heads off the shelf. So John Lloyd in Perth, who's been an expert in the LS range of engines for a very long time, he put the package together for me. I put the supercharger on it. Originally we are gonna use a Harrop supercharger, um, but ended up deciding to go with the American Magnuson, which is the same as what they run in America. So the only difference between my engine and the American engines is they run a 350 cubed steel block, Whereas I've gone for a little less revs and a little bit more reliability. So I've gone a bigger cubic inch engine with the aluminium block. Um, and obviously not factory heads, I've gone aftermarket heads, but the same supercharger. Actually, this transmission came out of a Copo Camaro in the States. So Todd Patterson, who is involved with uh, Camaros in the US, he had this transmission in one of their cars. So I bought the transmission off him. And then they don't run trans brakes over there. So I had a trans brake put in it over at Cone and then shipped out to Australia. So it's got a nine and a half inch Ford in it. So it's got a 411 ratio at the moment. But Craig Burns, who built the chassis up in Sydney, he put the rear end in it, uh, 40 spline axles, you know, all the real drag race stuff. But uh, it's got a radial style four link in it. So it's got a real short, you know, 250 mil long top bar and a standard long bottom bar. Yeah, so it's got a funny car cage, which is sort of similar to what they do in the States for their 750 certification. Uh, obviously, we don't need to run the SFI standard cages over here, but it's got that, again, used as inspiration. Um, in America, they run full interior, so carpeted floors, roof linings, stuff like that. I've got the door trims, I've still got electric windows in the car, it's all glass. Uh, running door trims, but I've got floor mats, so I've actually got the Holden floor mats in there. Uh, no roof lining, but just carpet in the back to fill up the rear firewall, just so it looks nice and neat. Yeah, so the dashboard's an interesting story. When I was stripping the car, when I first bought the car, there was a handful of bolts that I couldn't find underneath the dash to remove the dash to do all the work on the car. And I got onto Google and started Googling how to remove a VF dashboard and I actually came across an article from Triple Eight Racing up in Queensland about their development of the carbon fibre dash for the VF V8 supercar. So that night I've gone to bed and I'm laying in bed thinking how good would it be to have a carbon dash in the car? And after a handful of phone calls and emails to Triple Eight Racing, I ended up buying one out of a car. So in the car now is a V8 supercar dashboard that weighs barely one and a half kilos. One unique thing you'll see when you look in the car or you jump behind the steering wheel is that the dashboard's offset about six to eight inches to the centre of the car. So the, the tiny little V8 supercar drivers, they sit up on nearly on top of the drive shaft tunnel to get the centre of balance or the, the lengthwise centre of balance closer to neutral. So they're in the middle, I'm in the standard position, so the dash is offset about six inches to the left. So Craig Burns up in Sydney did all the chassis work. Peter Ridgway built the engine or put the engine together with all of the parts from John Lloyd. Um, but everything other than the hard stuff on the car, yeah. So I put the car together all of the trim, all of the carbon panels, all of the other little bits and pieces. Yes, I've made myself mounted, assembled, had some assistance with wiring, but you know, other than the major stuff, did it all myself, yeah. It's been a long process. So I started the car in 2018. So I won drag challenge in the Doll Your Own class in a street car that I had in um, 2018. And after, divorce and selling the GXP that I had, I'd sort of made the decision wasn't going to get, wasn't going to get back into racing. Um, but after doing drag challenge, I sort of got the bug again. 
I didn't want to modify the car that I was using in Drag Challenge. It was a daily driver. It ran 11.5 seconds. It was good and fun, but it was a bit slow. I didn't want to ruin it and then risk not being able to take the kids to school on Monday. So the decision was made to get rid of that and buy something like this and just slowly put it together. Um, it was a long process, you know, COVID slowed it down. I had a relationship breakdown that slowed the whole build down, but yeah, finally got it up and running and here we are. So Top Sportsman, yeah. so TSAA, which is a super cla supercharged class in, within Top Sportsman. So I've got to run 850 or faster. So at the moment it hasn't run 850 yet. We've had a heap of gremlins, new car gremlins. So hopefully they've gone this weekend and we can qualify in the field. In theory, with the power it's made so far, if everything went right, it should run high sevens. Um, but without too much chassis tuning and everything else, I'm happy if it's gonna run 8.2. That's where I'd like to see it. Look, it's run 8.7 at the moment with a really bad slipping transmission, pulling a heap of power out of the car and dropping a cylinder off the start line. So if I can get it run on eight, on eight cylinders and if the transmission's all good, which it should be, yeah, I'd be wrapped to run low eights. On a nine inch tyre, you know, we're running the same tyre that they run in the States. So they run a 30 by nine, uh, it's a radial, but it's a full slick. So it's a radial slick, so that's what we're running as well. So again, trying to emulate what they run in America in a, in a VF Commodore. In Australia, um, you know, there's a big aftermarket for the VF, but in America, for the 20 or 30,000 cars that got exported, there's actually a huge aftermarket over there as well. So the bonnet on it's actually a carbon fibre bonnet out of the States. Um, there's a guy called Maverick Man Carbon in, a, in the US who makes carbon bonnets. So I went through a six month process of ordering a bonnet through him, getting it shipped to Patterson's in Kansas where they repackaged it for me because it was delivered in a cardboard box. So knowing that it was coming to America, Todd put it into a wooden, wooden crate for us then shipped it over to California where it sat for a little while waiting for a container. And then, yeah, six months after I ordered it, it ended up in Melbourne. A guy, a guy named, I'm trying to think of his name, Turbo Joe Fabrications yeah. in the States have made the K-frame for me. So that's coming out. Um, so he normally does them with engine mounts and sway bar mounts and everything for a street car. Whereas I've optioned it, no engine mounts, no sway bar mount, as light as possible. When it gets here, I'll put the lower containment on it. I'll do tow hooks and all the other stuff that it needs to suit what I've got now. You know, it's got pro jack mounts we need. So we'll get all those on it first before it goes in the car. Good top end and a good improvement out there for Carl. And 814 to 168 also. The quickest for Darren Parker here. Give him a ring for the two way out. Has a sweet very soon. Right out, we're going to move on now to Nick Pairing and uh, Graham Hargrave in the Bullet Race Engineering Lane. Top sports from first round of eliminations. It's actually pretty close. 10, 15 really? minutes or something, so uh, we're looking pretty good. Here we go. Break out doing it. No, the win automatically. Darren Parker, he just did a better job in 813. On